they put them crosses down in the, in, in, in the dirt. And all of them had them sheets over their head. And they set the crosses on fire in front of this man's they house. Down, they what happened was, the man uh, worked in the mine. And when he came out of the mine that night, there was three little white girls standing there. And they always like to, they only know what their parents teach them. Mm -hmm. And they said, hi, how are you? But the case was well, not he, so clear cut. he wasn't supposed to say hello back. It was the same thing like the Emmett Till thing. And because he said hello back, they ran his whole family out of town. Now my uh, step-grandfather, he said the, the, they used to call him the K. The K is coming, the K is coming. All the houses down south were built with they weren't built on the ground. You could crawl up under the house, up under the porch, mm. and go back. And he made me and my brother go back there, get a, get a blanket, quilt, 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 take a quilt and roll ourselves up in it. Go up under the up under the uh, house and just lay there. He said, I don't care what happened unless the house fall on you. Don't move. He pulled down all the shades. And he got his shotguns out, him and then his brother. He said, I'm going to get me two of them motherfuckers tonight. I'm, I'm going to get me two of them. He said, they may burn this house down, but I'm going to get me one of them. Mm. Uh, but they didn't, even, they didn't even bother us. They bothered us. They burnt his house down to the ground. They burnt his house down to the ground. And told them when they come back in the morning, uh, if there not be nothing there but ashes, because they better be gone. And he left that night and went to Ohio to live with his brother. His wife and his children and stuff had to go somewhere and stay until they could you know, get enough money to leave the town. But they had to leave the things to ride through town. And then when they would take their stuff, take the stuff off their heads and stuff, there was lawyers, the policemen, the doctors. Mm. They were all the most important people at times. People you're supposed to go to for mm -hmm. to protect and serve. Uh huh. But it was not. It wasn't a little uh, a poor cracker. That was the KKK. It was all the rich people. Chief of police and uh -huh. stuff like That's that. That's who it was. That's who we used to see him, and we knew that we better run and hide and get out of the way when when it was coming. Oh, do you think it's still the same way right now, just without the sheets? Oh, it is the same, but it's no sheets. They don't cover up no more. Uh, 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 Mary told that. Mary Trump. She's, Who's that? That's uh, Trump's niece. Mm. Uh, she, she gets on TV a lot to tell me. Uh, her father and Trump's brothers. Oh, yeah. His he, brother that passed. Yeah, he, he, he was uh, sick. Yeah. And, and Trump took all the money. And I think they were giving him a decent barrel. The sister, Trump's sister, is a judge. And when all this was going on, she quit. She quit the bench. She something happened there. What Trump did made her quit the bench. And she she's in hiding. But Mary Trump will tell you she got books out there. I said I was going to give you audio some audio books. Listen to her because I, I like listening to her on Anderson. She said, I'm not afraid of him because he's always threatening about what he's going to do. And she says, and my first cousins, oh, they threaten me. She says, but they know I'm telling the truth. Mm. Um, how they get her father and her mother and her. No, the Ku Klux Klan is alive. In fact, what is the name for him now? It's not Ku Klux Klan. It's a. He was ordered not to call police, so he waited for a ransom call with instructions on the way back. That's what they call him now. When the came by nightfall, he contacted the Jackson police. And He didn't do nothing. The girl spoke to him. The girl spoke to him. 15 year old boy, he from Chicago. He, he, he didn't know that it was that prejudice. He, she, he was supposed to be have whistled at her. 
right? But a few right. years ago on her deathbed, she um confessed like that boy was killed for no reason. He didn't oh, even yeah, speak to yeah. me. She said it was a lie. She said it was a lie. But is that doing any good now? No. What's done is done. Like me and was talking about last night, Susan, Susan Smith, I think was her name. She took that car and put her two boys in that car and pushed them over in that river. I remember. To drown and swore it was a black man that did it. Uh, and, and they believed it for a while. Uh, for a long time. Yeah. For a long time. I think until her husband got wise. She wanted to, leave. all of course she wanted to leave her husband. But see, they don't believe, they don't believe because you're, because you're black. They don't believe what the people say. I, I remember in the, in the Columbus, Georgia, when my stepfather was down in the military in the Army. He was in Fort Benning. And we had to go to school. The white kids went to school on the what? Because white and black didn't go to school together. White kids went to school on one side of Columbus and we went to school on the other side. And when we had to cross the bridge, we knew that we had to walk in the gutter and let them walk on the bridge on the sidewalk. Hmm. With our head down. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We couldn't even look at them. Mm -hmm. uh. Oof. But, you, but people didn't know no better. So, I think it started coming to a rise when that governor in Birmingham, Alabama, took that hose, Wallace. Mm. Took that hose. Governor Wallace. Wallace, yeah, that was well, his name. Well, didn't he end up being something in California? The chief, he ended up being something real, like the chief of the police. He said, he said, it wasn't funny, but he said, they don't even keep black chickens and white chickens in the same coop. So how do you think we're going to let y'all stay in the same town with us? That's what the governor said? Yeah. Wow. Mm. And right down there, if you go in that museum where they got that long counter down there, where the first, where the first black people got a chance to eat at a counter, lunch counter, was it Woolworth, Woolworth or something? I remember that. We would pass that and see all them white people sitting there eating. We better not stop and make like we want to buy something. Mm. We had to go around the corner in a mud-filled hole around there. I, I, now that I refused to do. I said I don't want no food that bad. But one day they decided, the black people decided, we're going to bombard that camera. And they did. They got beef for that, right? Mm -hmm. I see, I see like pictures of that, like yeah. people pouring milkshakes on them. And, yeah, I, I, yeah. That, that I know. Crazy. I went on the train, the East Coast, Seaboy train, I used to travel from New York to Birmingham, no, no, to Birmingham, Alabama, because that's where my stepfather and mother lived, and the train was stopped in Tennessee, everybody could get off and go and get lunch, except the black people, we had to stay on the train, so I was so stupid the first time. First time they let me go by myself, I think I was about 12. And uh, I jumped off the train and went in, in the restaurant. And I stood there and everybody was getting waited on. Nobody said nothing to me. And then a white lady walked up to me. And she said, Did you get on the train in New York? And I said, Yes. Because see, that was another thing. Everybody said, Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. He said, Yes. She said, well, it's just man. <laughs> but anyway, she says, uh, they're not going to they're not gonna wait on you. That's why I know you're not going to New York because you don't know it. Uh, but they're not going to wait on you. She said, what do you want? Well, I was so mixed up then, I didn't even know what to say that I wanted. 
So she says, I'm gonna get you the ham and cheese sandwich. You got money? I said, yes, because I did have money to buy what I want my lunch. And she said, go sit back on the train. So she got her lunch and she got my ham and cheese and my soda. And she brought it back. She didn't even take the money. Mm. She said, uh, you're in the South now. You cannot mingle with us. She was nice. But so so her per se wasn't racist. These are just the way that things went. Yeah, yeah. That's the way things. I mean like when I was down to Cliff uh, Candy's Candy's dad's house. Um, his mother took him down to the store. And the man says, uh we don't have no vanilla ice, no strawberry ice. Do you want to take a chocolate? I said, no, it's no sir. Now I'm the wrong one. So I said, I don't want none. So we walked back out. And his mother told me, uh, y'all need to get back on the train and go back to it. Since you're right back. Uh, that's what she said, y'all can stay down here. Because you can't, you can't talk like that. You have to say, no sir, yes sir, yes ma'am. I know. Agents continue canvassing the Harris neighborhood. Crazy. All right, Grandma, I'm about to get out of here, go to work, I'm tired. Yeah. It's feeling a lot better. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just do enough. Yeah, I've been, I haven't been in the gym for like probably two weeks now. So. Hey, sir, hey, sir, hey, sir.